Isang must always participate in battles. Okay, then I guess I'm going to go pull the new Isang then. Alright. Um, 200 pools, right? So 200 pools is how much set, how much lunacy per pool? 1300, hold on, during calcs. Uh, 17,970 divided by 1300. I have about 13, 10 pools, 13, 10 pools, 130. So I will be a little bit off the ideality, which means I'm going to pull until the first three star I get. And if I don't get him, I'll just spark him. That is my plan. No way! Not again! <laughs> oh, I'm the luckiest bastard alive! I'm the luckiest bastard alive! <laughs> Hello. So, once again, I have four things to talk about. I have to talk about the two new IDs as well as the two new egos. And good news everyone, we have a we have a ridiculous Yisang ID. <laughs> we finally have something ridiculous anyway. Uh, let's start with Ishmael. So for Ishmael, um, she's honestly a disappointment to me right now. Maybe up Typho will save her. Um, don't know what it's gonna be like. But for skill 1, 4 to 6, 4 to 10 is about an average amount. 1 tremor, 1 tremor count. Skill 2, 5 plus 4 plus 4 is 13, 5 to 13, that's pretty okay. But in fig 1 tremor, 2 tremor. Skill 3, 6 to 16, almost over breathing or Otis' skill 3 uh, range. So pretty solid for if you have high SP because you uh, have a 95% chance to get this uh, plus 16. Then burst tremor, reduce tremor count by four. I don't know why reduce tremor count by four is here because the reward I get for this is inflicting five rupture. Four tremor count is a bit precious. Uh, I, I, we don't have like this character does not apply enough tremor count to warrant this being minus four. Uh, I I I have I have so many questions about this part here, but in terms of in terms of coinage, it's fine. It's not anything special. Defense is very thick because she's supposed to be a tank. Passive. I think the support passive is the only thing I will look at her for. When one ally with the highest speed burst tremor, they inflict two rupture. This one can probably be used to uh, buff maybe Rodion and whatnot. But even then, we are competing with Reindeer Ishmael here. We are competing with uh, She Ishmael if you want to do railway runs where you just drop her to 50% and just let her go crazy. <clears throat> we are also competing with LCCB Ishmael which is a fragile applier. So without any of these, this character just looks kind of alright. I wouldn't say she's particularly interesting. She does things and has pretty decent coinages to go along with her. Not exactly something I would recommend pulling for. But then let's look at Yisang. Yisang is pretty insane. This is a 3 plus 6, 3 to 9 range triple coin move. You know what that reminds me of? This is a 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So 4 to 10 triple coin move. Freaking incredible. And then if you look at this guy, it's 6, 12, 18. But actually if you... If you consider that this is a minus coin, maybe you roll heads or something, then it becomes half and whatnot, you know. So overall, like this character here is pretty damn solid already. Because we see the skill one is already pretty high and actually almost comparable with uh Rabbit. So the only thing that I would say is a bit problematic is that if you fight enemies with really high coins and they have high SP, this move will never win. Because the max that this move will roll is about a, a 9, right? So the enemies will roll 15, 11 and whatnot. So this move, pretty, pretty tricky, I think, to win some of these clashes. Growth rate is huge though. So we need to think about that, especially when we talk about clashes. Um, I don't think I have my clash calculator with me right now, so I can't really say much about this move in terms of clashing. But overall, if you can one side hit this, this is a, a pretty much a huge amount of damage. 
uh, gain plus three charm account, inflict sinking count, inflict sinking count next turn. All right, skill two, another amazing move, triple coin, four plus four plus four plus four. So that's about uh, that's four to four to sixteen range. Yeah, you can combat start spend six tremor, and you can convert that into an AOE skill that targets three slots. On hit, you inflict two sinking potency next turn. All right. And then skill 3, 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So that is a 6 to 18 range. So pretty decent again. Hell, it's probably like super great actually. This this ID is kind of insane. Uh, clash lose, lose 20 SP. On use, gain 6 travel count, inflict sinking count, sinking count. And if the target has 6 sinking, uh, 6 plus sinking, this is a potency. Uh, you cause sinking deluge, which instantly pops the sinking. And if the target's SP is 45 or lower, access will be dealt as Gloom damage. If user has 10 plus Tremor count, deal 30% of damage dealt as bonus damage. Even without looking at the rest of the kit, this character has a crap ton of damage output because he has a lot of coins. He is a positive coin character, meaning you don't have to SP manage him at all. The only thing you might be trying to min-max for is to get this ability here, where you need to spend 6 Tremor count to turn this into an AoE skill. So in order to get this 6 Tremor, you need to either have 2 actions on this character, or you need to use uh, two skills over two turns, and then on the third turn, then you can use your skill. Let me give you a scenario. Let's say you use skill three at the start. You got lucky. You got a skill three as your opening hand. On use, you gain six tram account. All right, that's the end of your turn. Next turn, you lose one tram account on yourself. So it's now five tremor. So with five tremor in your body, you now need to use skill one or skill three to activate more tram account on yourself. <clears throat> If you use skill 3 again somehow, so you drew two skill trees somehow, so you need maybe two actions, you can gain enough tremor count to activate this. If you say 10 plus tremor count, deal 30% of damage dealt as bonus damage. And if not, you can just use this skill and then wait for the next turn to pop the skill, sorry, to pop this skill and then uh, spend your tremor in order to convert this skill into an AoE that targets three slots. In addition, the passive here, when attacking two or more targets at once, you do 30% damage. 30% is a huge amount. I think this character is meant to be freaking insane in terms of damage. So, uh, yeah, this move becoming AoE against enemies that are weak to blunt or normal weakness to blunt is potentially disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Especially since there's an ID and it can roll all these coin inches as well. Yeah, a bit insane. Especially since if you can AoE, right? What happens is that all these on hits will spread to all the enemies you hit. So another huge insane uh, shit yeah, you can do. So we got lots of things going for this character. We got great damage, which is the most important part. We got an AoE on skill 2, which is kind of insane. Uh, our AoEs have always been from Egos. And now we straight up get a character that can convert their skill 2 into an... Ego, basically. It becomes a three target slot. So, I mean, he is an ego, right? So, it makes sense that he can do AoEs. And then, furthermore, we also have burst sinking. So, if you have enough sinking potency on the target, you can actually cause this to instantly burst all the sinking on the target, which is calculated by sinking count times sinking potency, and then you remove sinking. So, it will burst all the sinking at once, which honestly wouldn't have even, wouldn't have mattered too much because this part, right, is just a... Uh, like, because of the huge amount of coins this character has, you would have honestly dumped all of that sinking anyway. So you didn't really need this part either. But this this tremor part here, right, it's really cool because if you can get a lot of actions on this guy, you can actually gain quite a lot of tremor count and then you do a shit ton of damage on this skill tree. And furthermore, you can spend this to convert it into an AoE. So this character is absolutely busted, 100% must pull, in my opinion. Uh, his defense, in addition, is also an evasion move. So if you were to solo with him, you can actually use evasion to stall for time. I'm not sure if uh, all of you know about this strat, so I'll just explain. Basically, evasion is the only skill that can avoid damage completely if you succeed on the evade. Furthermore, this does something as well. Most evasions do nothing, but in this case, uh, this guy does something. So also pretty good evasion. I think the growth rate is pretty low, so it's pretty hard to win with this one, but I don't think it should matter too much. You just kind of want to avoid enough damage that you can get more actions, and then you can start clashing your enemies. So overall, this kit is really, really strong. Extremely strong. And I haven't even talked about the ego yet. So let's go to the egos now. Let's go to uh, let's talk about Yi Sang's ego first because I was talking about him and I don't want to lose the point. So for Yi Sang's ego, this ego is actually ridiculous. 
So it costs the exact same as Ebony Stem. Um, in, not in terms of element types, I just mean in total cost. This is a 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is a 6, 8, 10. Right? That's 10 energy. And if you were to look at Ebony Stem, Ebony Stem also costs 5, 5. So that's 10 cost in total. So in my opinion, I think this ego rivals or is even better than Ebony Stem because of a few reasons. First off, if you were to use Sun Shower, you straight up generate Sloth, Glut, and Pride. Gloom, you need to get somewhere else. But you know what? You can use so many other characters that give you Gloom. You can use... <coughs> you can use Sun Shower, Heathcliff. You can use Ninclair. Like, those two have really common Gloom attacks. So this part is really easy to get. These three parts here, you can just get from the character itself, or you can use other characters to, to help generate this. And the cost is very worth it. So how this ego works is that it is a 5 target AoE just like Ebony Stem. That's 27, okay? Before attack, you give 1 sloth power up, 2 damage up, and 3 protection to all allies this turn. This is before the attack. Meaning, when you attack with this ego, this 2 trigger immediately. Okay? So this damage number here, it might look lower than Ebony Stem, but you need to remember that these 2 calculations here have not been added yet. If the enemy is weak to sloth, it's disgusting absolutely disgusting and even then five aoe with this and five slot ridiculous amount of damage ridiculous no wonder it's at the end of the battle pass and it's probably how we are going to you know be persuaded to buy it but uh i'm no, i'm in no rush to buy it if you i think for speed running <laughs> you might consider buying it it's really worth it uh as per usual because people who likes to make their battle passes are uh, very very worth it uh, you can get a lot of sparks, a lot of characters, a lot of stuff. I'm personally not going to do that. I'm just going to go into Railway with uh, my standard stuff. Uh, mostly because I don't want to buy this Battle Pass because I want to... Uh, I want to buy the Battle Pass when Rio Shu's uh, voice actor comes out. That's really it. I don't have any other particular reason. But if you are going to buy the Battle Pass for this Ego, hell yeah, dude. This Ego is actually insane. And let's look at the Corrosion, right? Okay, wait, wait, wait. First off, I think I forgot to mention, right? That even you get these two before the attack, but do you also notice that it says this turn and then next turn? <laughs> you get it for two turns! Meaning, if you use your skill 2 on your Yi Sang or your skill 3 on your Heathcliff, you can do a badonkers amount of damage. Because those are sloth skills. It's ridiculous. And if you were speedrunning, for example, and you just want to face tank enemies, 3 protection. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. If you were to corrode also, right? Like, you can look here, you see 30 minus 10. Like, like okay, because Yi Sang is a heads character, you probably will have to get 20 damage, right? But no, 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 no. You haven't seen this part yet. So, if I were to overclock this ego and get this part, before attack, gain 2 sloth power up and sloth damage. 2 sloth damage up, okay? So, that's an increase of 1 sloth power. This turn and the next 2 turns. Two turns. Furthermore, after you use this, you get Sloth Fredge and two Pierce Fredge this turn and next turn. What? You can overclock this, use it this turn, dump all your Pierce moves, your leaps, your quick suppressions, your uh, Heath, uh, SS Heathcliff skill trees, your. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Your, your Grippy, your, the gaze. Uh, a shank, whatever other pierce things you want to do this turn, and if you have any other sloth moves like Sun Shower Heave does, you can even get this bonus here. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, this is not this is not the right one. This one is for himself. This one's for himself. Yes, but this part here is insane. This part here is insane because even if you don't give your allies the buff because they are not sloth damages, then you just give yourself the buff, and then you apply the fragility for yourself because your skill two is. Ah, sadly your skill 2 is only blunt, so you only get the sloth damage, but it's fine, it's whatever really. If you wanted to, you could even use the ego again, 
right? Because the ego is also a piercing ego. So you can just use the ego again to get the benefit. And then in addition to that, you can also use Sun Shower Heat Cliff Skill 3 because that is piercing and sloth if you use your skill, if you use the non-overclocked version of that ego. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this ego is badonkers. It's ridiculous. It is busted because P Moon wants us to buy the battle pass. And this ego is really not okay. In, if, beside that, right, this passive is just free SP healing. If enemy even applies like what three sinking on you, you can just rely on this passive to reset it, and then you just keep winning clashes, and you're positive again. It's it's a crazy ego, ridiculous. It's, it's, uh, oh man, we are really hitting some power creep levels here. Like yeah, this ego is not okay. It's really not okay. Overclock, you get two turns of damage up. Sloth power up, sloth damage up. You just don't benefit from the pierce, but the enemy also gets sloth fragility up, so your skill 2 now just does a billion damage. If you want to, you just use this ego again, and you can just... Uh, uh, you, can, you can stack 4 fragility, because if you overclock this ego twice, you can do it. It's kind of insane. It's kind of insane. Especially if you want to solo with him, and you just overclock, and you just like, I don't give a shit, target indiscriminately, I don't care, just hit whatever you want. <sighs> oh my goodness, this ego is so unfair. It's not even funny. Okay, I've. Okay, okay, that's enough, that's enough. Basically, Yi Sang must have that ego right there. Even if you don't buy the battle pass, next season you must get it. You must go and get it. It's that good. It's that good. It's a new god. It's a new Ebony stem. It's even better than Ebony stem, I would even argue. Yeah, okay, anyway. ADD Gregor. Um, also really hype, honestly. Like, it's, even though I was super hype about uh, Yi Sang's ego, this ego here is also pretty hype. And the reason being is that Tree Gloom, uh, Tree Envy is good because this ego is meant to be used with charge count characters and those guys can generate a lot of these elements. Before you attack, you gain 7 charge count and on hit, you inflict spark discharge. This status is whenever the attacker hits this guy it doesn't have to be you right it doesn't have to be gregor who does it it can be your dawn it can be your it can be your um i don't know some other character that uses charge uh w mer your w faust or whatever maybe if you were trying to run that what happens is that when those guys hit this character they gain charge count based on uh like uh, how many times they hit so it's every hit you do you get one charge count to that character so it requires a little bit of management. You want your charge counts to be distributed to those characters that really benefit from the charge count. That is the idea here. And when you hit it with a gloom attack, take note, there's a second part of the line there, you can gain one rupture count. So having that, right, actually lets you maintain a pretty high potency on your rupture count. Especially uh, when you run a lot of characters like maybe Nin Claire, because he has a gloom attack, you can run your, um, what's his name, uh, SS He. Yeah, so it's really, really strong actually, having both ch uh, Rupture Count re uh, replacement and uh, Charge Count gain. Yeah, it's really, really strong, this this uh, this status. I really like this Ego a lot and I foresee a lot of fun uh, fun team comps with them. Yeah, uh, I think the logic here is that you want to use this Ego first to apply the Spark Discharge and then you want to maybe like use LCCB Ishmael to apply Rupture Count. Once you have 3 Rupture Count, you are basically, every hit, you are maintaining the potency of the Rupture and you're replacing the charge that you just, uh, sorry, you're replacing the count that you just consumed. Yeah, so it's it's really good to just keep maintaining your Rupture Count and also for allies with multiple coins to just keep, you know, smacking and dealing that amount of Rupture. So really solid for Rupture and really great for Charge Count. You can even use it to just charge up your Reindeer and your W Dawn and then you just run Gregor alone. So it's like a three-man team and then no matter what happens, right, you just apply this Spark Discharge and you let those two characters just hit the enemy in order to gain Charge Count. And when you run those three, right, it becomes like a battery, haha, <laughs> because he's full of Charge. So he's passive here, on hit with hits coins, spend 2 charge count to give 1 charge count to the charge possessing ally with the lowest charge count. So by this logic, right, if you run the 3 of them, you should be able to give your charge counts to either Dawn or either Reindeer who both really love their charge counts. So there is really like, this character, this, this ego is really solid, really fun, I like it a lot. 
it's a it's a charge count support that I've been asking for and they finally delivered it. So really good, really good. I really, and it's free too, it's free, you know. So you just you just get it and then just use it. Yeah. Uh, I think the fact that unfortunately it's on hit with a hits coin, right? Uh, means you kind of want to have as many coins as possible. And I think the only two characters that have a shit ton of coins is G Gregor and Liu Gregor. The Chainsaw Man Gregor does not do enough coinage. But if you were to use Chainsaw Gregor and you use this Ego, you will be able to generate the energy required for you to use your skill tree quite often. And you can convert your tremor, you can burst your tremor and then convert your charge count into the rupture count. So it's probably meant to be used with Chainsaw Gregor, yeah. Probably intentionally designed for that, but I think most of us will not be doing that because uh, honestly, do this into skill tree in order to get more rupture count. I guess I guess that's the only way you can get a shit ton of rupture count, huh? Besides using uh, LCCB Ishmael. Yeah, uh, rupture count is such a rarity. We really need a lot of um, ego resources in order to get a significant amount of rupture count. But this I, this ego here definitely does just help out with the rupture count stuff. So yeah, overall the design is great. The value that it gives for the cost here is great because you will generate a shit ton of these resources, especially if you're running any of our like latest characters, especially if you're running W Corp, uh, Dawn, yeah, Odin Claire even, because you will generate a lot of these elements, really a lot. So Gloom went from being my most uh, rare resource when I'm running my F2P team, and then now it's pretty more. It's much more common, basically. It's much more common to get Gloom. So really great, really great ego. Nothing much else to say about it. It's just great overall. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Wait, wait. Sorry. I think I forgot to talk about the Corroder version. Uh, Corroder version is it's honestly something you don't really want to do. It's it doesn't really have any significant benefits except maybe adding a little bit more damage here and also applying charge count to an enemy. So maybe if the enemy had a specific like status that said like oh if I take uh, if I have this amount of charge count I shut down or something like that I don't know, but this this part here is kind of a waste. Probably only use it for this and then use it for the passive to charge up people or to maintain rupture counts. Yep. So really nice, really nice. Uh, I believe the intention here was to combine this with Chainsaw Gregor. Yeah. Okay, so besides that, what else is there to say? Um, let's talk about the other two banners. The Otis banner is fine if you want to get 7 section 6 Otis. Besides that, I would not pull this banner at all because I would 100% recommend that you dump everything to getting this guy right here. He is actually insane. And yeah, I've already explained. He's he's ridiculous and he's got drip. This guy has everything. So yeah, I hundred percent recommend everyone dump all their life savings into this banner in order to get him. You will need to dump two hundred to guarantee you get him. And if you don't, well, just go and get your crates and get him. Okay, like you gotta get him. You gotta get this guy. He's actually insane. Okay. Uh. Lastly, I think we I want to talk about Sun Shower Heath Cliff just a little bit. So Sun Shower Heath, um, so far doesn't look like there's gonna be any buffs. Maybe oh, okay, no 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 wait sorry I forgot Uptie Four is coming up. So Uptie Four with Uptie Four in mind, right? I'm a I'm going to cope a little bit and say that perhaps in Uptie Four, Sun Shower Heath Cliff will get away to maintain his sanity at a low level. Maybe. If he is able to do that, then he'll be a lot more consistent than he already is. And he'll fit well in with our uh, Spice Bush Isang. That is my thought. Because lore-wise, right? Um, uh, Sun Shower Heath, Yisang, and Sloshing Ishmael are supposed to be in the same terrorist organization. Along with Talisman Rodion and Talisman Sinclair, according to the art. Uh, if you looked at Sloshing Ishmael's art, right? you can see that uh, Talisman Sinclair is here and Talisman Rodion is there. So lore-wise, they're supposed to be together. So I would say that uh, in order to make them together, they would probably give Sun Shao Heath a little nudge in the right direction. He just needs a little bit only, just like a little bit more S SP drain, uh, just reduce SP gains or something in order to just like maintain that tail coinage because it is very good damage if you can be at low sanity. Yeah, so I think with a little bit of cope, I would kind of recommend Sun Shower. But at the same time, if you just don't believe in that, 
then don't get sun shower because sun shower is really very hard to maintain low SP with the SP system. Yeah, so it is very hard to get the value out of this, this or this because of the high S the high SP counts he tends to be getting nowadays. Yeah, it's quite tricky to get him to a low SP count. Yeah. So uh, with that, I think I've said my piece. So in summary, um, Yi Sang is absolutely a god. I 100% recommend this guy, no matter what. I would dump all my life savings to him and P Moon has blessed me with a 10 pool into him. Ishmael is okay. Not breaking any like like um, records or trying to be different or, or anything. He's, she's just all right, you know? Decent passive. Okay coins, like, yeah, that's it. And then we got Otis Banner. Otis Banner is, um, if you want 7 section, you can try to pull for her, but not when this guy is here, really. So I would not recommend pulling for Otis. I would say get Yi Sang instead. And then Sun Shower Heath, little bit of Copium, and I would recommend to pull. No Copium at all, then don't pull. Because I'm kind of hoping that his up tie 4 will save him. And if his up tie 4 does not save him, then it's a bit of a waste. So you can wait until later to spark him maybe. But yeah, it's, it's really up to you. I'll leave the rest up to you. I've said my piece. I've gotten both my uh, Spice Bush Yisang and my Sun Shower Heath Cliff, so I'm quite happy. And my Otis 7 section, I think I got her quite a while ago from pools, yeah. So I'm also quite okay with that. If you're a new player, I would recommend getting Spice Bush Yisang for sure though. Yeah. And if possible, as a new player, you should also try and get uh, Rodion, um, Rose Hammer Rodion. Really, Rose Spanner Rodion is one of my hardest carries for the entire of Chapter 4, and I imagine she will hard carry you for Chapter 3 as well, because in Chapter 3, the enemies are also weak to blunt, and her skill 2 here also does a lot of damage, like a ridiculous amount of damage, because it's basically Cloud Cutter but piercing. Yeah, so really, really strong character. Uh, absolute hard carry. I love her a lot. Okay, so I think I've said everything that needs to be said. If you all have your own opinions, then feel free to just um, feel free to just leave a comment, and I'll read through them, and I'll make an adjusted video if I have to. And besides that, I think I've uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you all for watching. 